Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. Some of you say, well, what, what, is, what is going on? What took you so long? I was talking to the dolphins. They were celebrating something that just happened. How many of you were aware of what just happened here? Really, what happened here? The whales in particular on the planet create a safety net for the history of the earth. The akash of the earth is stored there in the DNA of these mammals and we have told you that before and although perhaps not at a conscious level but at one that is so intuitive that they jump with joy when they see you these animals know who you are it might be said that these animals therefore carry the safety net of humanity in case you would destroy it find it they're needed if all of the crystal skulls are found and revealed and don't stay in the earth part of the Akash is destroyed did you know that we've told you that but the whales will always have it in case it's needed for balance in ways that you do not understand the system requires it and that is why there is so much mystery why does your heart leap when you see the whale why do you want to give them names <laughs> indeed there is communication between you oh even those who would not believe anything of what you believe would see them and burst with excitement especially when it is their environment that you are sharing for this moment and they come to the ship and they leap around why would they come here and why now what a coincidence it is that you're on the top deck the place where the viewing is the grandest and greatest what a coincidence they've waited until this day in this meeting to show themselves like this for you and if you think that was an accident, you ought to know the odds against it. What you just saw was communication, a wave. We know who you are. We know what you're doing. Human being, we share something with you. Isn't it a coincidence that even the countries without oceans have signed the agreement not to touch the whales? Over 90% of the governments on earth, over 90% have agreed not to harvest these animals. Intuitive it is that all humanity knows that the dolphins and the whales, which by the way are all whales, <laughs> ask a biologist. A dolphin is simply a small whale. They all have a piece of the puzzle. And isn't it interesting you always find them together? Remember this moment, remember this day when they visited you and spoke. It's got to be something beyond the reality that you understand, beyond 4D, when you get this kind of a reaction. At this moment, when all of you can look and see. What a joy. There are other things on the planet like this. Specifically where the animal kingdom is allied with humanity. What part of the animal kingdom is it that gives you joy? What about the animals at home? Did you ever wonder about them? What is their purpose on the planet? I'll tell you this, some of them exist 
for your healing. And I think you know what I talk about. How does this system work? I'll tell you it ought to point out. It ought to point out who's in charge. It ought to give you an idea of the responsibility you have to hold a balance on the planet where the animals themselves know who's in charge. And they exist to communicate and hold energy for your test on the planet when they exist to love you and be with you and sit beside you. Think about that one. We're going to give you in this small amount of time something to think about. It's going to test your perception yet again, but it's going to be about who you are specifically. But before we do, it indeed is true that I will not leave this place The entourage will not go away here. Until the end of the music tonight. But what has happened in the room will remain in the wood and in the metal and in the cloth. Because who sits here is grand. Oh, I want to take you on a journey. Oh, I'd love for you to see the big picture. You don't know. You're on the 13th deck of a grand ship in the year 2005. And the whole universe knows who you are. If I could open the sky to you, show you the energies in the universe who all know about the 13th deck and the energy that you are. There is so much more here. And I'm going to ask you to celebrate your life for a moment. So many different paths here. Beginners in what you would call spiritual study as well as the ones who have had it all their lives and yet you are all equal in your abilities to send a light and again I will bring this up because I cannot pass this over ever so when I saw you in the wind of birth which I have so many times seen you. That's the metaphor for when you literally leaned into it and were born and said goodbye to the other side of the veil and yet again came in. That every single one of you who was here walked into the energy of the Armageddon prophecy. Every single one. And on the other side of the veil, when your name is not the way it is here, when you are a part of a greater energy, when we said goodbye to that part of you that came in, and we said, are you serious? Do you mean it? Do you want to do it? And all of you said, wait till you see what we can do. And the reason is because the potentials of the planet were pasted in front of all of us. This track and that track. There's the Armageddon track. There's an old energy track. And then there's this potential of a new Jerusalem. A time on the planet that will even have a name. One that has not yet occurred even to your historians. The potential on that track, it will be a new dispensational name. And it's not bad news, and it's not the age of confusion. It's a struggle between the old and the new. 
led by warriors like the ones in the room. The meek of the planet, ordinary in their stature. They look in the mirror and they see nothing more than the 4D and what we see is master's potentials in all. Each one of them able to send the light because they've asked the important questions. That's who's here. And where do you fit in in that? Where do you fit in in all of this? I want to give you for some, some perceptual concepts and tie it into something I had my partner do and now he'll know why. Number one, I'm going to call this little study for these few moments. The way the human beings successfully avoid the miracles. <laughs> or something like that. So it becomes a treatise on advice about ascension. Ascension is defined as that process where you ascend in vibration and meet the potential of your DNA. The potential of your DNA you can see in the masters who walked the earth. For they touched the elements and they changed. For what they said has been written forever. And everyone saw it. Because they saw masterhood, they saw the love of God within them. Mastery, that's ascension. That's what's hiding in the DNA. And as you move from this place and you go home tomorrow, or at least on to the, the land where you will eventually go home from, you will feel different. Some of you will say, did this, did this ever really happen? What was it that Cryon said? You'll fall back into the ritual of life. The appointments that make the clock a little more important. As my partner says, you will remember the days of the week again. Why don't you leave differently than you came? I want to give you some advice about those who wish to go to the next level. Three pieces of advice. Number one, make no assumptions. The hardest thing you're ever going to do is not to plan what you think you're doing. <laughs> Crying, that's difficult. We want to go to the next step. You're telling us we don't even get to know what the next step is. That is correct. You don't. Because each one of you, through your own processes of activating what is hiding within yourselves, will create the next step. That's why you cannot write a book on ascension and have it make sense at all. Each of you must create this from your own core DNA abilities. How do I do it? Uh, we've given you that information before. The intent is pure. Heard by the universe when you say, Dear God, what is it I need to know? You can start this process and your own activation of DNA, which will start to occur, will create the synchronicity that allows the next step. And it won't be necessarily what you think. Make no assumptions. Well, Cryon, I have a pretty good idea because God has given me in visions what I'm supposed to do. Make no assumptions may have been an overview of a path that was a potential. You may have even been looking at something you used to do. Make no assumptions. 
people. I've been told by a reader that I, I'm going to move here, I'm going to move there. That's where I'm going to find what I'm going to end up doing. Make no assumptions. You may be surprised between the time that was told to you and tomorrow that whole scenario may come to you instead. So in the process of closing out your life in one place and moving to another, oops, where you were going came to you instead. Make no assumptions. Well, Crying, how can we then plan for the future? Don't. <laughs> Not spiritually. You can't do it. It's the beauty of the system. When you start the process, the synchronicity of co-creation, even counterintuitive to what you think, will occur in your life and shock and surprise even you. And if you decide in advance what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen, you will successfully avoid the miracle. <laughs> Off into your own 4D path. Oh, some of you will be successful but never knowing what didn't happen never knowing what didn't happen that was number one here's number two ignore the clock and here's what we mean no matter what a reader has told you about the when and the where no matter what your dreams have told you, what you think spirit has given you about the when and the where, there is no time on the side of the veil that we are on or the one that you normally live in. And so all of this information is timeless. Now when you receive it, it may paste upon it an energy you think has a clock. I'm giving myself a year. God said this would happen and within a year, this, a reader told me that within a year, within a month, within three months, make no assumptions and forget the clock. This makes it very difficult to plan a life, Cryon, in 4D. Oh, I didn't say you used to stop your life. I just said, don't expect the train at a certain time spiritually just because you were given the ticket. And if you read on the ticket, you're not going to find a time anywhere, I promise, no matter what anyone tells you. The time of its departure has to do with what you do with your DNA. Some of you have been given visions, passions, what you're supposed to do Oh, crying, I know that I'm supposed to have that book. That I'm supposed to do this and that. I want to form this group together and we're going to send light. And I want to go here and find these folks of like mind and, and do this and that. I'm telling you, all of those miracles will occur the closer you become to your own DNA activation. And what I'm saying is you take care of yourself and that light will start to shine and that's where the synchronicity comes from. Doesn't come from the clock, doesn't come from prophecy, doesn't come from a reader. It comes from you working with you. The information you've been given even upon this very cruise. Did you get some of you got the notes, some of you got the the grouping, some of you receive the music. All of that is about self introspection. Who are you? It's not about your future. It's not about what you're supposed to do next, but it is. You use that to make that light in you shine so bright and that then propels the activation of the DNA which then starts the co-creation which then starts that ball rolling as to the next step, pushes you into places you didn't know you'd go. And the timing becomes divine and your own. Hmm. I'm still not sure you understand. 
difficult it is for any of you to do anything significant when you can't plan it, when you can't visualize it. Oh, you can visualize it, but you can't visualize the assumptions of the timing of it. You can see what you want it to be, but getting from one place to the other, that's what you can't do. And you can't do it because the DNA is not activated that's allowing it. How do I activate my DNA? It's easy. <laughs> oh, divine one, the tools are there. You push on the door. It starts by itself slowly. If you have pure intent to do these things, you will begin to have the healings in your life, both biologically and mentally. You want some self-worth? Why don't we dole it out today? There is no reason in this place. There is no reason in this place for this not to be 100%. All the intent is there. How do you feel about yourself? Hard to overcome a lifetime of the opposite of what you're trying to create, isn't it? That is the miracle. Let me give you the third and the final one. And this is the most difficult. I'm going to give you information we've never given before in this form. How would you like to know that you don't even know yourself? Each one of you, if interviewed right now, would know all about yourself. Who better knows you? Your strengths and your weaknesses. What you want to do, where you've been, what you've learned, the secrets you carry. And you will say, I'm the only one on the earth that can do that. And I'm going to tell you, from a spiritual standpoint, if we had an inquiry and ask you to pour out upon the energy of the verbalization, everything you could about who you were, we would sit back and we would go yeah but what about the rest and you would finally say that's everything I can think of that's who I am and we would say to you yeah but what about the rest you see there's something hiding how do I tell you this even the most intellectual of you who feels that you have the mind that can that can inspect the brain can't go past what you don't know can't go past what you don't know and here's the truth dear human being when you start activating the parts of the DNA that have never been awakened they begin to change the you that you think you are the tools are there for a whole nother you that's what mastery does And when you begin that, when you end that, and if I were to interview yet, uh, yet again in a number of years and you've gone beyond what you know now, it'll be another you that you'll talk about. What's hiding in there? Oh, how do I explain this? It's like the, the painter who never received the brush. And then one day the brush was given to her. And the paintings began. Didn't know I could do this, she said. <laughs> Remind you of anyone? That's activating the DNA, you know, dear. The artist in all of you, oh, not necessarily on the canvas. What about the art of wisdom? What about the art of healing? What about the art of, of communication to others, including family? The sculptor without the clay. Some of you sit there and you say, I'm too old. I can't start that now. And that's really funny. <laughs> How do I explain this to you? I'm going to give you a metaphor. A number of days ago, my partner started this entire conference talking about himself, and he had never done it before. 
And he was nervous then about it, and he is now. It doesn't seem appropriate, he thinks, to waste a half an hour talking about himself when he could get on to the teaching, and yet he did it. And he did it because I asked him to do it. At the last moment, I asked him to do it. And now I'll tell you why, because now you'll get the rest of the story. Because I'm going to talk about him now. We're going to go back and interview Mr. Carroll when he was 40, 21 years ago. And I want you to see him standing there because he's 40 and he's done. His children have been born. He's done having children. He's done with his school. He's done going to school. He has a passion of what he wants to do for a living and he's accomplished it and he's doing it. That's Mr. Carroll when he was 40. If you could interview him and say, who are you? He would tell you about his passions and what he thinks the future will bring and where it's going to go and what he enjoys and what he does not enjoy. And what he thinks about God. What he thinks about others. Even what he thinks about politics. Now we're going to go down there. We're going to rewind the clock and the angels are going to start asking him the questions and I want you to listen to the answers. All right, Mr. Carroll. Where did you learn to speak in front of people? And he'll say, I never have because I won't have to. Mr. Carroll, where is it that you learn to be comfortable in front of thousands and he will say I never learned that you see I don't have to I'll never need that you see Mr. Carroll how many books have you written what what kind of articles do you have and he says I've never written any books I have no articles I didn't even well do well in English class you see I'm an engineer I didn't need that I didn't, didn't need word skills I'll never have to I won't need it won't need it interesting isn't it for today he sits with 12 books in 20 languages and he regularly speaks to thousands Mr. Carroll where are you going to get the, the wisdom of spirit to give the metaphors you need to give to communicate Mr. Carroll what about channeling and he'll say don't need it don't go there don't want it I won't ever do it don't need to I want to tell you about activation of DNA because none of those things existed in the human being who was 40 and if you'd interviewed him he would say he is approaching middle age he's not going to learn another language at this point in time is he or is he and when spirit laid upon him in the right way out came the books he met the right people the relationships were appeared when they should have and gave him the teaching that he needed and the comfort in time of storm all of those things and out of the DNA that he had became another person one who was an author and could speak in front of thousands you see it was always there and hidden. What have you got? What is there? Oh, maybe it's not to write books. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it's to be a powerhouse that we call a light worker on this planet. Maybe it's to be one who knows how to love so completely they can change the whole family around them. Maybe it's to walk the planet so that Gaia will remember who they are in a profound way that's private. There are so many things here. I want you to meet the rest of you. What's in there is mastery and you don't even know it. And if I were to interview you and you and you right now and say, what about it? Who are you? You'd only have a piece of the story. And that ought to make you excited. And as my partner said earlier, when you start dishing out those things that you never knew you had before, 
like the artist in the room who never knew she was an artist there's joy there and it's not difficult although there may be challenges they're joyful and that's the invitation leave here differently than you came or at least with the information that you can start to use in a new way did you like the whales I wish I could tell you what they have to say message from the whales humanity is the key to peace on earth humanity is the new energy on the planet that we have waited for if you had destroyed yourself eventually you would have destroyed all on the planet if Armageddon had taken place on schedule all would have been gone within a thousand years a very short amount of time for extinction and I'm going to tell you who knows that it's a very happy dolphin that just passed <laughs> and the whale that blew its spout for you that's who knows it at a subconscious DNA level they were built to support everything you're doing I was your partner that you saw go by. They look happy to you? I think it's a coincidence they all showed up at the same time. <laughs> it wasn't a coincidence. They're all part of the picture. And they just said hello to the masters on the ship. Thousands of you. Some of whom were up here who know what I'm talking about. so in a few minutes after you've had sustenance we'll participate in the energy of the music and then close but we're going to stay here and celebrate something remarkable all these masters in the same room who don't even know who they are really And so it is.